So today is April 15th, and it is the continuing story of Joshua and his conquest of the land that we have here in, in Joshua 11, another place that I love to read because I've been to Hatzor. It's a really great place to visit um, and uh, really get a sense of how important and strategic it was for the conquest of the land. Uh, it's the gateway to the north, the northern part of the, the land. So in the previous chapters, um, Joshua has conquered uh, the middle section for um, Jericho and I, and then separated the north from the south. And now when he comes here, um, all the northern kings are going to be meeting up in, in uh, Hatzor. And so the strategy was that uh, the Canaanites know that Joshua and his armies are coming, that they've seen them across the Jordan River for the last 40 years. And they know that they're headed into the promised land at some point. And so they make um, a set of alliances. Um, there's a northern alliance, a central alliance, and a southern alliance. And all the kings who are supposed to, uh, just small little kinglets and the little towns, um, kind of city-states, they all know that if they band together, uh, they'll be more likely to um, be able to uh, meet this huge army of Israelites coming into the land. And so when they see uh, Joshua, uh, Jericho and I um, attacked, they know that they're next on the list. And so they all come together at Hatzor, and Hatzor is the head of all those kingdoms, as it says, a couple of places in, uh, in um, Joshua 11 here. And uh, so they all rush out um, to meet them in the fields, and that means that all the cities are emptied. All that Joshua needs to do is go and slaughter the armies on the fields, and then he goes in to burn the capital city, kind of the head of all those kingdoms of, of Hatzor, and then all the other cities will just have um, women and children basically left to defend them. And so they'll um, indeed get that promise fulfilled that, that, that Moses had said uh, to the people that they're going to inherit places that they did not build and uh, vineyards that they didn't plant and orchards that they didn't plant. And uh, so they'd be able to su sustain themselves with uh, fully functioning cities and civilizations. And all they have to do is burn three of those cities um, in order to complete that conquest. And so the third one that they burn here is Hatzor after they've done that to Jericho and to Ai. And uh, I thought also... The Gibeonite deception handed, uh, came in the four, in chapter 14, too, and Gibeonites come up with a different strategy to try to avoid being uh, taken um, and burned, um, so they end up becoming slaves, but um, they deceive Joshua, and so their, uh, their whole kingdom is uh, destroyed pretty quickly as well because of their um, uh, attempt to make an, uh, an alliance with Joshua, which they're successful in doing. So, um, so it's um, a very interesting uh, and complicated, but also um, brilliant plan that God has for destroying and, and taking this promised land and also leaving it intact so that the Israelites won't have to rebuild from scratch and risk several years of starving to death as they're trying to settle the land. So um, I love how uh, Joshua really describes that process well and how nice it um, comes together when you get to visit these places and see how that strategy would have played out. So that's it for today.